all and welcome back to the episode of Tom's Gaming World. Thanks for joining us today. So um, I'm here to talk about whatever's new in my gaming world. Um, it's been a little while since we've done one of these so there's been a few new things going on. So we'll just take the camera over here and what we'll see down all the way down here is this little nook where we've got a, what I consider to be a cool little setup. We've got a Dreamcast now that plays any region and now we also have a PS2 Slim that will also play any region games. Wow! And uh, that explains why I've done these, started doing these collection videos because I pulled out all my import games. And you can see them, among some other things, over here. These boxes are all full of imported PS2 and PS1 which can both be played on this here console. So, what was the reason for uh, picking up this PS2? Well, I wanted a, an, an easy way to play all these games because alternatively I need to have three different PS2s to play three different regions. So regions being PAL, um, NTSC US and NTSC um, Japanese. So, this is an all-in-one, um, what would we call it, solution to the, to, to the issue. And I'll show you how it works, and it's very straightforward. So this just connects like any other PS2. It's a PAL PS2, it just happens to play uh, all the region games. So if we take this game here, <coughs> which is quite interesting, because this was released in the US, Space Channel 5 Special Edition. This contains both the first and second Space Channel 5 games. And I think it was due to the, um, at the time, Limited Run were offering the um, VR, uh, Space Channel 5 VR as a, um, let's just pop this in, as a physical edition. So I was inspired to go back and play these ones. I thought this might be a cool way of playing them. And it was fairly affordable as well. So we've just turned the uh, PS2 on and uh, got the channel that we need. Just doing a little boot up. Now there'll be a lot of reflection because it's a lovely sunny day here. Um, but I can see there, it's using uh, some internal uh, software that's been installed onto the console. So this software enables it to recognize different regions and uh, in turn boot whatever region game that you put in. So, as you can see, it's very easy to get working. Oh, please, push the right buttons. Up, down, up, down, choo, choo, choo. Choo. Up, down, up, down, choo, choo, choo. Yes, yes. The rescue failed. So I can confirm that Space Channel 5 is as difficult as it always is. <laughs> Um, getting that timing right is, is quite tricky. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to try a Japanese PS1 disc. This is interesting because this takes a little longer to boot up. Uh, the screen will go to black. Now you've just got to be patient here. I thought at first it wasn't working properly, but I was, I was incorrect. But you happen to get a console like this you can expect it to take a little longer to boot the PS1 games. I actually sent a message to the seller regarding this I didn't think it was working at first but as you can see there you just have to wait that extra little while longer for it to boot up. But once it does it runs fine as you would expect and this is a, a Balaburn, which uh, I always struggle to um, pronounce. Which is a 3D fighting game from Takara, actually. Haven't played this in a uh, very long time. So there we have it. I'm really happy with, with that solution to the problem of uh, not being able to play all these games I've got easily. Being able to play through one console and it be that reliable and work that well is just uh, absolutely fantastic, I think. 
Uh, so, as previously mentioned, Space Channel 5 Special Edition. Uh, yeah, struggling to get back into it really, struggling to uh, compete with the difficulty. This is a game that once you find your flow and once you get into the groove of the timing of playing it, it's pretty good, um, from what I remember anyway. Because uh, last time I played this would have been either the Dreamcast version or the re-release of Space Channel 5 part two, I think, on the Xbox 360. Uh, but yes, it's a really nice condition copy of it. Things in good working order. And I didn't even know that this existed. But it's another one to add to the the growing collection of PS2 uh, Sega games. The next one's also a PS2 game. And this is The Bouncer. Hoo hoo! The Bouncer. So, uh, like Space Channel 5, you'll be seeing footage of this. Uh, captured with... Uh, component connection, we well, should be, if all's, if all's well, um, component connection I've got for the Elgato. So this game is very interesting visually, uh, quite a good looking game at the time when it came out, but notable because it has a weird like filter on the picture, you'll be able to see it's all, everything's glowing, and on a modern TV uh, that doesn't look so good unfortunately. But uh, it's all fine if the gameplay uh, holds up, and for the most part it does. It's a story-based beat-em-up game. Uh, has a few RPG elements after every fight segment. You can uh, get your various skill points and upgrade various attributes of your characters. And you can always choose before any of the game's fights who you're going to play as. So it's quite fun actually building up each of the three characters because each of their specific strengths or weaknesses uh, I like that aspect of it. It's very stocky and starty because it's trying to tell the story so there are quite um, frequent cutscenes but it's got a good pace to it. I kind of like that. I don't mind it too much because when you go back to it, into the gameplay you know what you're going to get for the most part. There are a few sections where you have to run around and uh, under a time limit uh, at the beginning of the game uh, basically there's doors are closing in front of you and you've got to uh, get through those doors before they close otherwise you have to replay the segment so do make sure you save often in this because you might just get up even if you think oh it's fine don't worry I'll just replay it um, you might reach a point like that where you might just die and then have to replay a big segment of it so try and save even though it does take a little while to save after every uh, fight in the game um, do I like it or not? I, I do like it. However, I got up to a certain point where the uh, character I was fighting, it was a, I think it was like three on one, basically, because the computer controls the other two players, you know, depending on which one you've picked. Um, I say three on one, it was two, or, two on three, um, because uh, this character you're fighting has a, like a leopard, not a leopard, what am I talking about? It's like a panther. Panther, big black cat's a panther, isn't it? Um, fighting alongside him, and yeah, it was pretty difficult. And uh, I left it there, and haven't returned to it since. I, I must uh, play a bit more of it because I've heard it's a very short game. So yeah, the Bouncer PS2, it's a very short game, and you've probably either played it or seen it knocking around. It's very cheap to pick up, um, and I can recommend it. I mean, you're probably only going to pay, don't pay more than pay on Fiverr for it. I would. Um, maybe even delivered if you're buying it offline. Online? You're buying it off the internet, buying it online. It's confusing, isn't it? Um, yeah, but some people do like to ask a little bit more for it, but yeah, just don't, don't pay too much because it's not actually a game that's demanding high prices. Also, a game you can pick up relatively cheap is, oh, let me remind myself what it's called, Trick and, Trick and Snowboard, or a very weird title for a game. So this is a step up from Cool Borders in my opinion. Uh, cool Borders is the snowboarding uh, game series often associated with the PlayStation 1. This is from Capcom and it came to my attention because I heard you could play as Resident Evil characters in it. Such, I think, I know Leon's in it for sure, maybe Claire, uh, so it must have been released around the time of Resident Evil 2 and also a zombie I think. 
Uh, it's also link cable compatible, so if you've got multiple uh, play two PlayStations and two TVs, then you can play multiplayer like that. It's an analog game. Um, what's interesting about it? It's not a racing game. It's a trick-based game. So you'll have a course. You'll have to hit a certain score uh, through that course, and um, if you can't, <laughs> then you have to replay the course. So it's you definitely. It takes a little bit of time to adjust to. Once you do, yeah, it's actually it's a pretty good game. Uh, got a lot of personality, anime style characters in this one as well, so very Japanese. Uh, I like it, and as I said before, it's not an expensive game. And so, for a good snowboarding game on PS1, I think this uh, Trick and Snowboarder is worth your time. Now, I can't talk about this game very much because I've hardly played it, but something I did pick up recently, because it was very cheap, £10 is, um, I think on Amazon, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Heard a lot of good things about this, heard it's perhaps the best Assassin's Creed game, next to Black Flag at least. Uh, and now, I can agree with uh, people's opinions on Black Flag, because Black Flag, having played a little bit of it, uh, it's really good and it's actually the only Assassin's Creed game I've played in recent years where I found myself actually be getting rather into it. Uh, this one's gameplay style is a little bit different. Uh, I think with this game they moved into some more RPG like uh, territory that they continued in the sequel Odyssey and I assume they'll continue uh, with that same sort of template in the Valhalla when that eventually comes out. This is set in Egypt which was a big draw for me. Um, I'm not really at a point where I should be starting any big games because I'm very much into Shenmue 3 at the moment and then when I'm not playing Shenmue 3 I'm, I'm going back to Yakuza 0. So that's meant I haven't really got stuck into this uh, but I'm intrigued to do so. I've heard some good things about it but uh, yeah I can't, uh, I can't really say much about this one at the moment. So I'm going to leave it there for this episode of Tom's Gaming World. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, really happy to have that uh, multi-region PS2 and now with the adapter for the Elgato it enables me to um, capture gameplay footage of both PS2 and um, PS1. So hopefully that should bring a bit more to these videos should I be talking about those particular um, formats. So yeah, thanks for taking your time to watch this, really appreciate it. Feel free to leave comments below, like the video, and if it's the kind of content you enjoy, then also feel free to subscribe to the channel. Until I see you again for another video, it is goodbye and game on.